In Excel, it's not uncommon for you to have to combine data, and that often means you have to go get the data from some external source, bring it into Excel, and once it's in Excel, then you have to make the data usable, all of which could take a really long time. Using Power Query can help automate this process. In case you're new to Power Query, on a very fundamental level, it helps you get, clean up, and make your data ready for analysis. Put another way, if you need to merge your data, the vast majority of Excel users aren't familiar with how Power Query can help automate their work. For instance, many people might have a bunch of lists they need to combine, so they wind up copying and pasting the data into a new sheet, all of which could take hours and probably give you a severe case of carpal tunnel syndrome along the way. Furthermore, the downside of copying and pasting is if your data updates, you'll need to go through the entire process again and no doubt you can hardly wait for that to occur. Alternatively, some people might use the vStack function, which lets you stack your lists on top of each other to create one big list, which can be a workable solution if this is a one-off occurrence. Yet, the main drawback with this formula is the same with the copy and paste, and that is if you add new data or add new sheets, the vStack won't refresh, and that's not good either. However, if you leverage Power Query, it will update to include new rows, sheets, or even files automatically. Let's see how it works. In this video, we'll show you three ways to use Power Query, along with showing you how to modify a query and create custom calculations within the query. The three methods we'll show you are how to combine multiple sheets into a new Excel file. The second one is how to combine multiple sheets into the same file. And the last method is how to combine multiple files into a new file. Let's start out with how to combine multiple sheets into a new file. Taking a quick peek at our data, here we have some regional data, and we've been tasked with having to consolidate all this data into one big list. Lucky us. So let's start off by creating a new Excel file. Then we'll go up here and click on Data, Get Data, From File, From Excel Workbook. Then all we have to do is navigate to where our source file lives, and then we can select it. So in this case, it's the file with the regional data in it. So when we're ready, we can just go ahead and click on import. Let's give Excel a moment or so. Now over here on the left, we can see all the sheets in our Excel file and we can preview the data if we want. And it doesn't really matter which one we choose yet after we're done previewing it, we can go ahead and just click on transform data. And this transform data command will bring us into the Power Query editor where we can make some modifications. This first part is a little funky because Power Query is a little bit ahead of us by showing the data for just this sheet. So as awkward as it is, we want to navigate back to the source so we can bring in all the data. To do that, over here on the right, we can see the steps the query has already taken. And what we need to do is X out or remove the steps that we don't want. So we're left with just the source. And now that we're at the source level, we can see all the sheets in our file, and this will bring in all of our data when we're ready. And while we're here, why don't we go ahead and give this query a name, and let's go with something like this. Moving on, these three columns right here, we don't really need them, so we can go ahead and do a right click on each of them and choose remove, so we're left with just these two. Okay, so now that that is completed, our next step is to expand our data so we can see everything. And to expand the data, we can go up here and click on this icon and then go down here and choose OK. So the next step in our process is to make our data usable. And granted, that can mean a lot of different things. But for today, let's focus on some common tasks like removing the data we don't want to use and changing our column headings into something more practical. Starting with our column headings, it's obvious these generic names are not going to do us any good. So what we can do to fix that is go up here and click where it says use first row as headers, and that will replace those generic column headings with the ones from our file. So that's a lot better. The next step is to get rid of some data that we don't want to use. For example, if we scroll down here into the list, we can see some column headings from our other sheets. So to get rid of them, we can filter them out by going up here to the top of the column headings. Let's say the product category, then click the drop arrow. And we want to look for and remove product category because this is a column label from our other lists and we don't want to include it. So from here, we can go up and click on close and load. Let's give Excel a moment or so. And it looks like Excel has loaded all of our data. So that's pretty cool. Now let's check out the automation. If we go back to our source file, 
And let's say we add a new sheet with a new region called Central. Let's make sure to save our changes. If we go back to the merge file and refresh our data, you can see Power Query has brought in the new sheet. Ah, <laughs> pretty cool. All right, that'll do it for this method. Let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so for this next method, we'll show you how to combine multiple sheets into a sheet in the same file. All right, so for this example, here we have our data and we want to merge everything into one sheet. And as a quick side note, for this example, we're using just a snippet of our data just to make things easier to see. We can start by going up and clicking on data, get data from file, from Excel workbook, and then navigate out to where our file lives, which in this case is right here. Okay, so once we connect it, Excel is going to show us all the sheets in the file. So in this case, we don't want to select any specific sheets like we did in the previous example. Rather, we want to click on the folder because if any new sheets are added, they will be included when the query is updated. Put another way, by selecting the folder, it will select all the sheets in the file when we run the query. So now we can cruise down here and click on transform data. Okay, so for this next step, we're going to go over here to this column labeled kind. Then click on the drop down arrow and choose text filters. And we want to set the filter equal to sheet. The reason for this is if your data has, let's say, multiple tables, name ranges, it will bring in the sheet only. Plus, it could save you from other unwanted headaches as well. Moving on, now that we set that filter, just like before, we can go ahead and get rid of the columns we don't need. So we can do a right click and remove these three. Next, in this file, we have a sheet called All Regions, which will eventually be used to show all our data. So we want to make sure and remove that. And we can do that by going up here and click on the filter and uncheck the All Regions sheet. So Excel will always filter it out and not include the sheet in the query. Okay, so from here, why don't we go ahead and expand out our data just to get a look at it. All right, so some of this we have encountered already, which is the column headings not cooperating. And we can fix that by going up here and clicking on use first row as headers. Next, let's scroll down to see if we want to filter out any data that we don't need. And it looks like we need to do that as well because we have these repeated column headings in here. So we can go up here and filter them out. Let's say go up to the product category and uncheck the product category box. There we go. All right, so let's go up here and click on close and load to. Make sure we are on the appropriate sheet, which in this case is the all regions sheet. Let's give Excel a second to catch up and it looks good. All right, now will be a good time to save our work. So let's go ahead and do that. Now let's pretend we had some new data added. So just to make things easy, let's go ahead and copy this sheet, rename it to let's say central. And while we change the regions to central while we're at it and go up here and make sure to save our changes. Then let's go over to the all regions sheet. Let's do a refresh by doing a right click and choosing refresh. And if we get this right, we should see about 20 new records being added. Check it out, pretty cool. All right, so let's move on to the final option, which is combining multiple files into a new file. All right, so for this last example, let's look at how to combine multiple files into a new file. Just to set the stage, here in this folder, we have three separate files, and each file contains data for just one region. And like we just mentioned, we have to pull all these three separate files into one large file. We can start by creating a new file, then go up and click on data, get data from file. And this time we're going to go with the from folder option. So the next step is to go out and select the folder that contains the files we want to use. And once we do that, we can see all the separate Excel files within the folder. And since all these files have the same structure, we don't need to transform them in any way. Rather, we just want to combine them. So we can go down here and click on combine and load. And the next step is to click on the sheet that contains the data. So we'll go ahead and do that and click OK. Excel will work its magic, merge all the data. And there we go. Now, as we scroll through the list, we can see all the data along with the file name of where it came from. 
And when we show you how to edit the query here in a few moments, we will get rid of this column. But for right now, let's say we got a brand new file sent over with a new region and we have to add it to this merged data. So for illustration purposes, I'll go back to the source folder, copy one of them. Let's rename it to central. Now, if we go back into our Excel spreadsheet and refresh our data, you can see the new file information has been added. That's pretty cool. Okay, so since you have stuck around so long, how about we do a little bonus and show you how to modify our query and do some custom calculations. For instance, let's say the boss wants us to remove this file name column, and then for whatever reason, wants us to do a calculation that shows a 5% tax rate on our sales. To accomplish this, let's go up and click on the Query tab, and then on the far left, let's go ahead and choose Edit, which will bring us back into the Power Query Editor. So how about we start off by getting rid of the file names that we don't want to see, and we can do that by going over here, do a right click on the source name and choose remove. Next, to do the calculation, we can go up here and click on add column, then choose custom column. And in this next step, we have to give our new column a name. So why don't we go ahead and call it tax. Then click down here in the custom formula area and then go over here and double click on the sales amount. And we can multiply that by 0.05, then click okay. Then go over to our home tab, choose close and load. And we can see the column has been removed along with the custom calculation being added right over here. All right, and that'll do it for this one. Make sure to leave your thoughts below and we will see you next time.